My name is JC Hope, and this is Wordsworth. Wordsworth is the newest show where I, a fellow fiction writer, will teach you the deeper meaning behind new and familiar words when writing. As my gloves would indicate, this episode will cover words related to combat. Offense, defense, strategy. Think of these words as fighting moves for the arena that is the blank page on your screen. I'll also include a few bonus tips outside of word choice. This relates mostly to subtext and plot. Muy importante. Let's waste no time, step into the writing ring, and wrestle with some new words. Ha! Our literary regiment will begin with words related to close quarters combat. Mano a mano. Punched and kicked are the basics for beginners. An attack from a fist, an attack from a foot. Pummeled and stomped. Think of these two as more evolved forms of the previous two. Pummel is a perfect way of showing repetitive punching, while stomped can show frustration. Tackled is rushing into the opponent, like a bull. Multiple characters would tackle each other if they're after a single object, like a football or a magical relic. Brawled is awesome. Think of a messy, aggressive confrontation where both sides are relentlessly beating each other up. Strut is very versatile for any kind of powerful attack. It really fits a character who has some need for payback. Example, the Empire Strikes Back. It also fits a character that needs to hit the right target, like striking the bell. Slammed refers to incredible power. You're gonna feel it in the morning. Smashed means that something was seriously damaged, broken, or wrecked. Smacked can mean a hard slap, but it also describes a target that is moving away and out. Thrashed is wild and out of control. There's pain involved and someone has lost his or her mind. Lunged is diving forward. Whether it's a prowling beast or an offended sibling, you're going to be pinned down or thrown against the wall. Shoved can mean something light, like pushing the cat off the table or pushing a creep away from you on the dance floor. Someone wants their own space. Pounded is repetitive. Pounding the door, pounding the meat. It's also a sensory word because it describes what is being heard. The gloves come off. But let's say weapons and tools are in play. Here's what you can use when the game is set with items turned on. Beat, a classic, both with fists and with weapons. Hitting with a wrench, a candlestick, a lead pipe, a paper fan, it can be cruel and cartoony. Fired works for any fiery projectile, a pirate's cannon, a magical beam of light, a blaster gun. It's fast and fierce. Shot is similar to fired, but it works better for bullets and arrows. Keep that in mind. Aimed is precise. It can be used before someone pulls the trigger. Launched involves a contraption or an army. Something may be flying in the sky, like missiles or boulders. Whipped involves a whip or a long, thin, flexible item, like a vine, a tentacle, or a belt. Stabbed involves a handheld blade, piercing the body. Painful and quick, almost sneaky. Plunged worked extremely well for a dagger to the heart or a flag to the ground. It adds a bit of a dramatic flair. Slashed can be gory with claws or a long sword. The attacks are horizontal or vertical. Basically, you're gonna need a bigger band-aid. Impaled is focused on penetration. It's often used indirectly. Maybe it was a steel trap or a very pointy icicle. Yikes. As any teacher, counselor, or doctor will tell you, protection is always important. Let's talk about defense. Guarded can imply that a shield or a barrier is in use. Someone is trained or has some level of experience. There's a touch of nobility. Think of a loyal knight or a friendly robot. Deflected and reflected are very similar. Deflected redirects the projectile back to any other location. Reflected often means that the attack was sent back to the user. It's also good for light-based attacks. Think lasers and glowing spells. Countered really shows skill and cleverness. The defender has used the attack against his or her opponent. Parried is to block a long sword or a staff. You would knock it away before striking the opponent while he or she is open. Dodged and evaded. Very simple and similar. You're avoiding the attack. Dodged is quick, almost by instinct. Evaded is more strategic, elusive, and sometimes deceptive. Ducked is dodging by sinking low. You're letting the attack pass overhead. Dove is like ducked meets lunged. You fall on the ground, but at least you're unharmed. And now, we'll move on to words with more Destructive definitions. Shattered, like glass. Snapped, like bones. Crushed, like concrete. Annihilate, like a city into ruins. Exterminated, like an alien race. Decimated, like wiping out multiple online gamers with a single move. Demolished, like a hurricane ripping through a neighborhood. 
obliterated like an explosion, leaving no remains. Pulverized, like grinding a giant robot's head into nuts and bolts. Conquered, like a nation as you plunge your flag into the soil. Before we end today's episode, I do want to share some extremely helpful tips with writing fight scenes that I learned from published authors, from interviews to panels. First is purpose. Why are these two characters fighting? For glory? For love? For the last cupcake in the fridge? Whatever the reason, there needs to be one. Don't waste your best words on a fight that means little to nothing. Second, risk. What will happen if the character loses? What are the consequences? Who's going to be affected? If the motivation is strong, then the reader will be more engaged in the fight. Third, time. This is a two-parter. Let the flow of writing match the flow of fighting. Write less to move fast, write more to move slow. Also, save the most epic fight near the end. Set up with smaller fights, reoccurring failures, and witty banter. This builds tension, which leads to a most satisfying payoff. And that is where we will be ending today's episode. Your brains may be sore, but you'll thank me later. <laughs> For the next episode of Wordsworth, I'll be exploring words to describe both the hot and the cold. It'll be rather polarizing. Stay tuned. Before you leave this online dojo of sorts, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you on next Wednesday, and keep on writing. In case anyone's wondering, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> Biggest lie of my life. Ugh.